especially for those of the people that are coming to watch the word, the celebration, December 16th, a lot of people are going to get their next step that's going to propel them into this next season. It's going to be a powerful time. My aunt does a family newsletter where she essentially recaps the whole year for our entire family, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandma, our grandpa, people who have passed. We just get a really beautiful uh, newsletter of just what's happening in the year, what we've accomplished in that year, places we've gone, places we've traveled. Almost like an update. Keeps us all kind of together and in the know with each other. And it's really special. Something our, our family does. And shout out to my aunt because... It's been such a huge blessing, but I want to talk about something that's a beautiful theme that I saw um, and I noticed. And it's just what God is doing right now in this season in a lot of people's lives. Um, and it's life is full of these, but it's different when God is doing something in the entire earth. You see what I'm saying? And the common theme that I saw is all of us, we just were in one spirit saying, we really sense that we are in transition. And a lot of people, um, I believe right now are in transition. And so I wanted to talk about something that's really, really vital about being in transition. Is how you move when you're in transition is just as critical and of such high importance of keeping your heart right while you're in a type of exodus. Because when you're in transition, you're essentially leaving one season and you're entering into another. You're leaving one place and you're entering into another. There's two things I wanna talk about right here and that's be careful that your heart stays right while you're leaving one season while you're leaving one place. But then I want to talk about what to do while you're in transition, what you do when you're in transition and when the transition seems to be forced upon you, how do you move? How, how, do, you, how do you operate? You know, what, At what pace do you operate? Um, and I guess I'll start there because that's really vital to me. I'm going to read this scripture that really blesses me in Proverbs 3. The, the title of this chapter is The Rewards of Wisdom. Very beautiful. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. And in all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. Speaking about God, the Bible goes on to say, and he will make your paths straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. I'm reading in the Amplify. It keeps going down and I'm closing with this, verse seven. But do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. It's my favorite part. It will be health to your body, your marrow, your nerve, your sinews, your muscles, and all your inward parts, and refreshment, physical well-being to your bones. I want to talk about what do you do when you're in transition? How do you move? Where do you start? Where do you go? How do you ensure that your exit is right from one season to another? The first thing I would tell you is trust in and confidently rely on God. Don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways, simply acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. What I've learned is this. When you're in transition, especially when the transition may seem forced upon you, meaning you did not make the move, something moved you and you may be uncomfortable. People may be pressing you. There's a uh, an expectation 
There's a question of what's next for you. There's a question of where are you going? There's a question of how are you going to do it? I've learned that a lot of people in transition begin to move in haste or move in an accelerated way and they don't allow themselves to just sit still and listen. This is my encouragement to those who are in transition and feel like they need to make a move because of all the pressure around them. You can wait on God to give you your next steps. It's so easy to go, okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, I got it. I... Be still and know that I am God. That's so encouraging. There's no surprises to heaven, but you can trust in God. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't be moved by things that come to move you. You move when God gives you a word. My encouragement with this is wait for your next steps. That's going to look like talking to people around you. That's godly community for you. That's wisdom for you. Your next step comes. Spending time in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit, reminding you of things, reassuring you of things, bringing things back to your remembrance, confirming things, wait for your next steps to come. Don't be moved and make a mistake while you're trying to exit one season and enter into another. This is what I've learned. This is where a lot of people make great mistakes. And if you're in transition and something has moved you, and again, you, you feel uncomfortable, especially if it involves people, keep your heart right. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible says the mouth speaks. And I think of a people that we're in transition or we're in an exodus or we're walking out of one place into another place and they got right to the promised land and they missed out on their blessing. Because when God looked at their hearts, the posture of their hearts, their mindset, their words, they weren't ready. And I can say for myself, my job is to keep my heart right. And I worship God through the process during the transition, wherever I was previously, I'm going to make sure I leave honorably. And that's going to propel me into my next season. Remember, we want the blessing of the Lord. That's it. And I'm telling you, especially for those of the people that are coming to What's the Word, the celebration, December 16th. A lot of people are going to get their next step that's going to propel them into this next season. It's going to be a powerful time.